Bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. again to be in his house to study his word. Amen. Amen. We're going to be in Mark chapter 5. We're moving past verse 20 tonight. Say a hallelujah. 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 <laughs> we'll be in verse 25. Somebody saying, oh Lord, when we're going to get out of Mark chapter 5? Well, one thing I've discovered is that the choir and people can sing the same old song. Week after week, and you shout in the same old spot. But when it comes to the word, you get sick and tired of that same old word. But God has blessed us to, to dive into this word. We're talking about hermeneutics, right? The first step in hermeneutics, in hermeneutics rather, the first, first step in hermeneutics is called observation. No? Yes? The first step is called observation. The second step is called interpretation. So tonight we will deal with interpretation. Oh, last week we kind of merged uh, observation and we entered into interpretation by doing our word study, right? And so now that we have done our word study, we have to look at context and content. I want to ask you what's the difference between the two. Are you going to give me the right answer is the question. There is, when you're reading the scripture, when you're reading the Bible, there is context. And there is content. Context means what's going on in the environment around us. Ever since 2015-ish, our environment been toxic like never before. So our context has been toxic. Right around November of 2015. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Tell me what I'm talking about, Brother Miles. Oh, and uh, 45 was elected president of the United States. Especially when he just announced he was going. When 50 minus 5 decided he was going to be elected or going to run for president, I mean, racism became bold in your face. People that you've been fishing with. I used to get off work after 12 hour shift on my last shift. You know, you have to transfer from, from sleeping in the daytime and sleep and go and transfer back to sleeping at night, right? So what would we do? We would go fishing when we leave the plant. We leave the plant, go fishing, Back right down to San Luis Pass or Galveston or somewhere, we would go wave fishing. We got wave boots up to our chest. And I was the only spot in the bowl of milk. But it was all right, good old Christian boys, right? But when 45 announced that he was going to run for president, the same good old Christian boys that I used to be out there in that deep water with by myself began to post some racist stuff. I said, don't, don't it. For 15 years, I've been out here with them, and I'm thinking they one of us, and we, I'm one of them. But they started posting, and they started supporting the future president, making the same statements that he made. We studied the Bible at noontime together. We went fishing together. You can tell who your friends are when you do things after work, right? But that's just not the case. So when we look at context, when we look at context, we're talking about what's going on in the, in the world, what's going on so around us. What is the culture? What is, what is the demeanor of the people? What is the, the unspoken values or unspoken spoken disclaimers? So we're talking about the atmosphere, the environment, when we talk about context. 
Then we have to look at content. The content is what's in the word of God. Where does it fit in the content? What, why did the author situate it right where it's situated? The context. When you open a book for the first time, you go right to the table of content. So you want to know what's in it, what's involved in it, what's going on in it. So when you look at the content, you're looking at what's involved in the passage, what's involved in the book, what, what's included in it. Yes? So in Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 20, we dealt with a man that was living in the graveyard. But when we get to verse number 25, we deal with a woman that's been suffering from 12 years with an issue of blood. But if we're going to do proper observation and proper interpretation, we can't skip verses 21 through 24. Because the author has situated it right there for a reason. This same story is mentioned in Luke chapter 8, 40 through 56. This woman has been hemorrhaging. This woman got God's attention. This woman stopped Jesus in the middle of what he was doing. Reminds me on, on church service, we used to have programs, right? And we still have slides. But in the midst of Jesus going about the program, this woman stops him. In the midst of this content, well, somebody read verses 21 through 24 for me, please. 21 through 24. Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 24. Just any burden. Go ahead, sister. Will you stand and read it for us real big, big for us? And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. Thank you. Now read verse 25, just that one verse. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years. Thank you. So check this out. Jairus is next in line. Yes? Well, we're looking for the proper content, right? Jairus is next in line. How we know that Jairus is in the next, next in line? Because he's the next person who got in touch with Jesus, right? Is it good enough to say, is it biblical enough to say that it wasn't this woman time? Yes? Or is that extra biblical? Is that extra biblical? Well, let's see. Jesus gets through dealing with a man that has a unclean spirit. He, he's cutting himself. He's living in the graveyard. He is a dangerous man. Jesus shows up in verse number six. The Bible says this, this man ran to Jesus, bowed down and worshiped him. And then the man was found by the town folks sitting and clothed in his right mind. He wasn't having a fool anymore, wasn't living in the graveyard anymore. He was clothed and he wasn't naked anymore. He was clothed and he was in his right mind. He no longer had graveyard mentality. Jesus gets ready to leave this same man say, Jesus, let me go with you. He's appreciative. Let me go with Jesus and no, go back home and tell your town folk what great things God has done for you. Right away, this guy became a missionary. Now, we've been saved all these years and we hadn't gotten to the missionary status yet. Isn't that something? 
So when, when this man is off the scene, Jairus shows up, Jairus is a leader, he comes to Jesus with great confidence. How do I know it's great confidence? Because he says it. Jesus, if you come, you lay your hands on my sick daughter, she will be made well. And verse 24 says what? Verse 24 says that a lot of people, Jesus went with him. A great multitude followed him and they thronged him. Check this out. Jesus is on his way to deal with Jairus stuff and here comes this one. Did you notice that he, he didn't get through with Jairus? So is it clear to say that this woman was there before her time? She went next in line. Jesus was already in the process of going deal with Jairus stuff. Deal with Jairus daughter. This woman shows up. So she's all out of line. When I look at the context, I can see that she's out of line because she's not next in line. Yes, ma'am. But you do know Jesus can do my stuff, your stuff, everybody else's stuff in here at the same time. That ain't what the Bible says at this point. <laughs> we do know from past experience, from biblical readings, that Jesus does what he wants to do whenever he wants, he can do it all at one time. Yes, we know that. But when we do proper observation, when we do proper interpretation, I'm so glad you brought that up. When we do proper interpretation, Jesus is not handling everybody's stuff at the same time. Yes? yes correct. Incorrect? Correct. He finished with the man that was in the tomb. He moved to Jairus. And then on his way to deal with Jairus' daughter, this woman touches the hem of his garment. What it does say to us is that all we have to do is get Jesus' attention. And yes, he can deal with our stuff while he's still on his way to deal with Jairus' stuff. The Bible says in verse 25, now a certain woman, observation, he, the author doesn't call the woman's name. Many people that are blessed of God and many people that that uh, do great things for God, they are in anonymity. They are, their names are not called. But in the church house, if you don't call my name, I ain't gonna ever do it ever again. Get somebody else to do it. Do, get somebody to do it that who, whose name you call it. Isn't that something? The author doesn't Mark doesn't call her name. Luke doesn't call her name. But it says a certain woman. When it says a certain, it means it could be any of us. It can be anybody. What it says to us is Jesus can handle anybody's problems. Jesus can handle anybody's problems. Because he's Jesus. He's God. He can handle anybody's problem. This woman has been bleeding for 12 years. We can't have a complaint for 12 minutes and deal with it. It says, now a certain woman had a flow of blood. When I picture a flow, what do you picture? When you picture a flow, it's running. It's not dripping, is it? She got a constant flow. Now, when we move from content to context, we know women who have a flow would not allow in public. She didn't even supposed to be there. She was out of line again. What does it say to us? Jesus takes us just where we are, just when we are, in any condition we are. Even when we break tradition. Even when we break the religious code. 
This woman broke the religious code. First of all, Jesus wasn't there for her. But Jesus was there for her. Jesus wasn't there on her behalf, but he was there when she showed up. Says to us that wherever we are, Jesus will meet us there. He's able to touch us right where we are. Now, this woman has a flow of blood. She's been hemorrhaging for 12 years. For a long time. It says to us, when we're bad off, we better take it to Jesus because the Bible, when we read it, we're going to see the Bible said this woman was bleeding for 12 years. She had gone to her doctors and they couldn't fix it. And they would just take, they were just doing what they're doing in 23rd century, 21st century, and 2023. Taking that money. Went to the doctors, they told her I got some pain. She gives me two prescriptions and charged me $125. Now, the $125 wasn't for the prescription. It was for her nurse practitioner seeing me. I, she, she said, now, if you still want to see the doctor, you can. Yeah, I want to see the doctor. I just gave them $125 up front. And they want it before you be seen. Before you are seen. This woman had gone to the doctors, and the doctors had taken her money, and the Bible says she didn't get better, she got worse. Can anybody identify? Can y'all identify? Y'all can really identify? Y'all got doctors in Texas like that too? Do you ever get the feeling that the, that the doctor is, um, is practicing on you? Did you know that's why they call it practicing medicine? You didn't know that? They call it practicing medicine. Then they make you fill out at least a minimum of 10 forms before they see you. And none of us read those forms. And you know what the form says? I can do whatever I want to do to you and you can't sue me. And guess what? If you're going to be seen, you got to fill it out. Something else in it. How many of you gone to several doctors for the same thing over and over and over again and they just keep taking your moolah? So you can go to four doctors. And check this out. That's the other thing. They may not even read the previous doctor's diagnosis and give you the same test over and over again. And the test is more than your copay. Let's look at the text. Well, someone, someone start reading for me, read about five verses, then the rest of somebody else take it on home for me. Or if somebody wants to stand and read, I'll let it do that for me. Verses 25 through 33. Verses 25. Mark chapter 5. Verses 25 through 33. Who's reading? 25, and I'm reading from the King James. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her plaque. And Jesus, immediately knowing of himself that virtue, that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about to the press and said, Who touched my clothes? We got two, three more verses. <laughs> and his disciples said unto him, mm -hmm. They see the multitude thrown in thee and said, Is thou who touched me? 
And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing that was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. 34. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. So go in peace and be whole of the plant. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So when we look at this, this passage, let's do first observation. What is the author talking about? We're looking for what? It's called a big idea. What is the author talking about? Everybody can have different answers, but somebody tell me some answers. The author is talking about a certain woman who had a flow of blood. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. A woman who had faith to know that Jesus could heal her. Anybody else? Yes, if Jesus, if she touched the hem of Jesus' garment, she would be healed. Yes, sir. A woman healed of her affliction. A woman healed of her affliction. Anybody else? They had seen many physicians. A woman who has seen many physicians and got worse. Anybody else? Jesus had the power to stop the flow of blood or heal the flow of blood. Yes, sir. Uh, hey, I was going to say something to you. Go ahead. She was a woman who gave away all her money to the well. Boy, deacons always focus on that money, don't they? Gave <laughs> away. <laughs> Praise God for deacons. Deacons know how to focus on that money. He said a big idea here is the fact that the woman gave away all her money. If she wasn't made better, she's made worse. Amen. I'm glad to have a deacon that focuses on money. Amen. So this is, this is called, when we do observation, it's called the big idea. The big idea. And then when we're preaching or teaching, we call it the subject. When you read verses 25 through 34, it's called the text, which is which we say the pericope. And the pericope is what? Okay, let me let me let me back up. Okay, thank you. The pericope is one complete thought, right? She was about to tell me the pericope of verses 30, 25 through 34. Yes, it is. It's the text. It's the pericope. But when we use the word pericope, we mean one complete thought, right? And so when we look at this pericope, we see a woman with an issue of blood. Let's go through our observations. What else do we see? Woman with an issue of blood. We see a woman that spent all she had. A woman who saw many doctors. A woman that had this blood for 12 years. Somebody else say something. What else do we see? We, we had a 21st century woman in the first century. So the Browns said a woman that was willing to go against the rules to get what she needed. And you know, religious folk can't take that. They can't stand that. Legalistic folk can't handle that. It has to be this way and this way only. Brother Miles and I were talking about the pulpit the other day. Brother Miles, share with us the thought pattern about the pulpit. So, that uh, a person could not, who was not a uh, an ordained minister, could not go across that pulpit. Could not Couldn't walk across there. One side to the other. Couldn't do it. If you're not called, if you're not a preacher, so guess what? When we build this church, we shut all that down. How do we shut that down? We built a stage. We built a stage. We don't have two low chairs and then a higher chair, then a big high chair. We got a stage. All those children we have up there on Sundays, boy, we could, they couldn't handle that in a traditional church. Can't walk across it. Can't stand behind it. We got women standing behind the pulpit. 
behind the podium, I put it that way. That's why I make it clear. Whenever someone comes up, this is now staged. It's only the pulpit when the man of God is presenting the word of God. Because we're trying to pull the folk out the pit. So this woman was willing to go against the grain to get what she need. Now, I don't get the impression that this woman just a rule breaker. But I do get the impression that she's desperate. And she already knows those doggone cussing, drinking <laughs> disciples couldn't handle it. Because when you read the text, the disciples are the ones that said, get back, get, move over. Jesus, don't you see all these people out here? They thronging you, they 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 bombarding you, they it's a crowd of folk, Jesus, and you talking about who touched me. I remember when I first became pastor of the New Beginning Church, I would do some things just to see what was going to happen. So one Sunday, I had removed the podium, the lectern. I had removed the lectern and had it sitting where it was hidden. No one could see. Brother ran in the office and said, hey, pastor, brother, pastor, brother, pastor, where's the podium for the pulpit? I said, you need it for something? I said, what's wrong? It, it's not there. It's not there. It's not there. Did you, did you need it? Did, I mean, you going to take it somewhere? We get stuck in tradition and religious activities and in legalism till we forget about Jesus. We forget that Jesus ought to be the main attraction. We forget that Jesus is the center of attention. We forget that Jesus is the captain of the ship. We focus on stuff. Had an associate minister here at one time. We used to give away awards during Sunday school. And one of the awards was excellent attendance and perfect attendance. Now, I don't know how you can separate excellent from perfect, but they, that, that's the way it is. That's, that's the tradition. So if you miss two or three days, you got excellent attendance. Excellent attendance. That ain't excellent. But if you didn't miss any days, you had perfect attendance. And so we had a young lady who would catch a ride with us every Sunday, and she would come to Sunday school, and then when we were out of town, she would catch a ride. She would catch a ride to our uh, she would catch a ride to church. She would catch a ride to church. She had perfect attendance. She wasn't a member, but she had perfect attendance. Got ready to give the awards out. I'm sitting in the office. Brother comes to me and says, Pastor, we got a problem. What's the problem? There's a young lady out there, and two of the sisters pointed out she's going to get perfect attendance award, and she's not a member. What you think I said? What you think my response was? She, she had, she was here. My response was it's not a membership award, it's an attendance award. <laughs> he said, yeah, but they pointed it out. And now, 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 now you're going to have to go out there and tell those two people that, that got a problem with it. I said, no, you're the one that took the order. You go back, back out there and tell them. Well, what you going to do, Pastor? I'm going to go out here and give her the perfect attendance award. You see how that is? Tradition. Legalism. Religion will get us in trouble every time. And then I went on and tell him, I said, now brother, you need to understand if she's the only one getting the perfect attendance award, that means the two folk that told you that did not get the perfect attendance award. That means we have a visitor that showed up more than the pastor showed up, more than the pastor's wife showed up, more than the pastor's daughter showed up, and more than any of them showed up. So go out there, you stand where you need to stand, and I will give her the award. 
That's why you don't have to be a member to sing in the choir. You don't have to be a member to usher. You just have to be a member to lead. Because we welcome people, right? But we get stuck and stuck. Thank you, Sister Brown, Sister Brown. That woman was willing to go against the status quo. So many people are missing their blessings because of the status quo. You ask some people, they start complaining about their church. Well, why are you there? Oh, this is my home church. My mama grew up here. My great-grandmama grew up here. My daddy grew up here. My great Both sides of my family. I got to stay here. I mean, purely shipwrecked in ministry. But they just going to sit under and keep going. One woman would uh, cut the end off of the turkey before she put it in the in the oven. She'll cut the end off and throw it out the back door. So her husband said, "Baby, why you why you cut the end off the turkey and throw it out the back door?" Well, that's what my mama did. So he went and asked his mama in law, "Mama, why why did you cut that off and throw it out?" He said that's what my mama did. You go and ask. The grandmother, the grandmother said, my pot was shorter, and they didn't make big pots at that time, so I cut it off and I fed the chickens with it because I didn't have a big enough pot. Now we got huge pots, and they still cutting the chicken and the hen and, and still cutting up the turkey and throwing it out the door. Have anybody ever asked uh, why, we, why we have a sheet over why we have a sheet over over communion? When I was a little boy, they used to roll that out there. And first of all, they looked like they were going to a funeral. The people think you look spiritual when you look ugly. <laughs> Stone face. They, they would roll that communion table out there. It was covered up. And then you had a high peak here, a low peak here, and then a low peak there. It looked like a dead person to me. And they came out there looking like somebody had died. So why did they cover it up? In the old church, they had church sometime outside. And then when they moved inside, they had windows that go up. And they didn't have air conditioning. So they had to cover up the communion to keep the flies away. Now we got air conditioning and we don't have the amount of flies they had. So one thing that I've done is say, don't come out there with that thing covered. Some of these children are going to break and run. See, we can't get stuck. And I'm just talking about content. What else do we observe? We see this woman, she got worse. We see that she heard about Jesus. Remember in Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 20, when you get to verse number 6, this man stops acting a fool and he runs to Jesus. Now when we look here, this woman realized the power of Jesus. This woman heard about Jesus and guess what she did? She responded. When we hear about Jesus, we need to respond. There's something called application. You have observation, you have interpretation and you have application. And when you deal with application, you're looking at the question to be answered, what is it doing in this woman's life? How does it apply to this woman's life? And then application is how does it apply to my life? So we know how it applies to the woman's life, right? She, she heard about Jesus. She touched the hem of his garment. She was healed. The blood flow shut down. The blood flow stopped. The blood flow dried up. And it didn't happen until she met Jesus. How does that apply to this woman's life? Well, she got healed. She was healed. Stuff that had bothered her for 12 years no longer bothered her again. The woman was healed. So we know how it applies to her life. How does it apply to your life? What hope does it give you? Does it give you any kind of hope? Who want to talk to me?
Remember, I got to get 30% of this time with you interacting with me in order for me to teach. Yes, ma'am. No matter what you've been struggling with. It doesn't matter how long you've been struggling with. Once you encounter Jesus, Jesus can fix it. He can, he will. Anybody else? What's the application for you? Is there an application for you? Yes, ma'am. If you have the faith to believe that he can, then he will. Any other applications in the room? How many of you in the room didn't get anything out of this? I mean, this woman, this woman went through 12 years of flowing blood and you got nothing out of it. Anybody? Okay, tell me what you did get out of it. How does it apply to your life? How does it apply to your friend's life? How does it apply to your neighbor's life? How does it apply to you? She Anybody? Have no more, can't have any more bills. She didn't have any more doctor bills. If I go to the doctor more than twice a year, I'm in chronic pain. I'm in pain. I can't take it anymore. You know what they tell you? You haven't met your deductible yet. I said, I ain't trying to make it either. Well, you haven't met your deductible yet, so it's going to be $125. Okay. Every business, I, I, I take my opportunity to pay the $125. I don't want to get to $3,500. Because when you get to $3,000, that means you have spent $3,000 to $3,500. That means you've seen the doctor a whole lot of time. And they said, ching, 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 ching. Are you with me? So they try to make you feel like you need to meet your deductible so you can pay more money. No, I don't need to meet my deductible. Let me pay you what I got to pay you now. I ain't worried about no deductible. Just, just kill me. Are you with me? You just want to be made the better and not worse. Another observation. Yes, ma'am. Amen. That which is impossible to man is never impossible for God. What man says, you don't even need to put that on your agenda. My favorite line is when they tell me what can't happen, I said, let's see what God says about it. I'm not going to make you any promise what God's going to do. I'm not going to tell you that if you do three Hail Marys and, and read the rosary in the morning, you're going to be healed, you're going to be well. I'm just going to say, number one, I'm going to pray with you and pray for you, and then we're going to see what God says about it. Because there are a lot of people going to tell you that, that it can't happen, it won't happen, and God can't do it, and God won't do it, or you're not pretty enough, or you're not the right color or you can't make it, and other folk have tried it. You ever seen people that every time you look up, well, my mama couldn't do it, my daddy couldn't do it, my daddy had, people have all these diseases they drag from generation to generation, and they are really generational curse. But they're not generational curse because they're just designed to be curses. They're generational curses because we allow them to be, and we just drag them on. My daddy had high blood pressure, so I'm going to have it. This is a genetic disease. Jesus is the one who we depend on to fix it. Don't get tied up with folk. Look at the disciples. The disciples already telling Jesus, Jesus, let me tell you something. There's a crowd of people out here, and you coming up here, and you're supposed to be God. And you asking me, you asking us, you asking the question, who touched me? A multitude of people have touched you, Jesus. But King James says, virtue left me. It was like never before. Virtue came from my body. 
Somebody touched me from deep down within. You know what that says to me? Jesus knows where I am. He knows what I'm going through. And he can feel my infirmities. And not only can he feel it, he can fix it. I got to keep depending on him to fix it. There's nothing too hard for, for God. There is absolutely nothing too hard for God. But people will make it hard for you. You ever heard the statement, never tell folk your vision because they are TT on it? Y'all haven't heard that in the city. Never expose where you're going. Never tell people, especially people that you know are haters. Especially people who know you ain't going to make. What, what's hilarious to me, what's hilarious to me, Deacon after this, is always the woman who don't have a husband that will tell you what you ought not put up with. <laughs> it's always the person who never had a house will tell you, girl, Boy, you don't need no house. It's too much trouble in the house. Graveyard mentality. It's always the person who's been done wrong that can tell you when somebody else is doing you wrong. Or going to do you wrong. The disciples got caught up in so much religious, legalistic stuff until they didn't even see the Holy Spirit moving when he moved. And they walked with Jesus. They talked with Jesus. They were there when the woman touched him. Every picture that I see of this woman touching the hem of his garment, she barely caught it as she was falling down. She could barely touch she couldn't, the Bible says, she said, if I could only touch his clothes. But she could barely touch his clothes. And she had enough confidence in Jesus. She didn't have enough confidence in his clothes. I always say, it wasn't the medicine. People say that he has enough medicine in the hem of his garment than any drugstore in town. It wasn't the medicine in the H-E-M him. It was the medicine in the H-I-M him. It's the medicine in Jesus. I always tell people, y'all talk about prayer cloths being mailed to you. Talk about anointed oil being given to you. I always tell them here, sister, if you get my rag after I preach, you got two things, and you got a whole lot of it. You got some snot, and you got some sweat. There are no blessing in either one of them. The blessing is in Jesus. And Jesus allowed us to pray. He allows us to do miraculous things. I'm not discounting that. Jesus allows us, God allows us, the Holy Spirit works through us, especially through the, the body of Christ. If you want a prayer to go through, call on the body of Christ. That's why we have a corporate prayer. We want God to heal from the body of Christ. You want to get a prayer through, call on Jesus. Muhammad can't do it. Call on Jesus. This woman, verse 29 says, immediately, before right now, and sooner than quick, immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt it in her body. 
I wouldn't have religion. That I couldn't feel something. She felt it in her body. She was feeling weakness. Because when your blood leaves your body and your blood count is low, your iron is low, you get weak. But the text says she felt it in her body that she was healed of this affliction. She was healed of this issue of blood. The fountain stopped. Her body stopped emptying. Stopped emptying of what she really needed, her blood. You want to see somebody that's going to die soon? Let them lose some blood. If the blood doesn't stop flowing, they're going to be out of here. Jesus asked the question in verse 30. Who touched me? Who touched my clothes? He says, I felt virtue. New King James says, I felt power. Somebody looking at that power right now. Tell me what that power is in the Greek. I felt power. I felt virtue. I felt and leave my body. Let me tell you, Jesus feels your pain. Jesus is touched by you. That's why we can't create our own God. These gods that can't feel what we feel. Don't know our infirmities. Some people made a man their God. A woman their God. Them their God. A congregation their God. A place of worship their God. <laughs> Those men are trying to get close, ought to be trying to get close to Jesus for themselves. I felt virtue. Leave my body. I felt power. Leave my body. Virtue. What is it? What is this virtue? I felt virtue. Leave my body. Agony. Agony. Virtue. This is Jesus' body now. Jesus felt something leave him. Let me tell you, when I got through more in the yard today, in 110 degrees, everything had left my body. If I had to run up on a snake today, I think he would have beat me today. <laughs> so, so I, I declare war on snakes every time I see them. I mean, when I got through today, I sat down and I was there for a good long time. I looked up, it was already 2.30. The virtue left me. My strength was gone. My might, Jesus says, my strength left me. My virtue left me. It was gone. It was gone. Jesus says, somebody touched me that hadn't touched me in this crowd like this. Your needs have been met when you touch Jesus like that. You have been fulfilled. Who touched me? Verse 32. And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. When he looked around, he saw this woman who had done this thing. Verse 33. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him, the whole truth. Observation. This woman was in fear and trembling. This woman was wondering, how is Jesus going to deal with this thing that I have done? What has she done? So the Brown says she ignored the standards of the day. Because when these things happen, remember, content here. Context was in the atmosphere, the rules and the regulation. She knew that context was one that she could have been stoned. She knew that that context said that she had no business out there in the first place. She knew in that context 
that she never should have gone past the disciples to get to Jesus. She's in fear, tripping. What is Jesus? How did Jesus respond? This woman bowed down before Jesus. She told him the whole story. In verse 34. And he said to her daughter. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has healed you. And you can only have faith. When you don't see something happening right now. Are there any believers in faith in the room? Is there anybody that's at a position, a crossroad in your life right now that you gotta, you got to believe God to get you out? Yeah. And you realize that if God doesn't do it, it's not going to be done. And you do realize that God has your best interest at heart and he knows what's best for you. Because we don't know. We just like children. I listen to parents all the time. Well, my child doesn't want to do this. Your child doesn't know what they need. <laughs> As a child, children wouldn't eat broccoli ever. But your children don't know what they need. And we are God's children. We don't know what we need. We ought to keep asking God what we think we need. God, I want it. God, I need it. I'm trusting you to do it. But God knows what we need. He knows it better than we know. So what we do, we keep, keep asking. Keep asking. Keep asking. God, I, I need this. God, I want this. God, I, I, I know you are the way maker. He's a way maker. He's a company keeper. He's a bridge over troubled water. He's a leaning post. His name is Jesus and he can do what no other power can do. Right. Songwriter said he can do but no other power. Then the songwriter gets caught up in his song and, and starts shouting in the midst of the song. He says, Holy Ghost power can do. So the application today is to keep trusting. Keep believing. God will do it by faith. Don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. Trust God and he can do it. Will you trust him? Will you believe him? Will you hold on to him? Stop letting your friends talk you out of your faith. Stop letting your family members tell you that that, that, that ain't going to work. It didn't work for them. And they don't want to see it work for you. But God specializes. He specializes in things impossible. And he can do what no other power. Some writer got happy and said, Holy Ghost power can do. The door of the church is open. Amen. The same Jesus that healed this woman, the same Jesus that stopped the flow of the blood is the same Jesus that gave his life for you on a skull hill called Calvary. Over 2,000 years ago, he died on Calvary. He was buried in a barber tomb. He rose early that third day morning. You can receive him today. You can go to heaven. And you can guarantee yourself a spot in heaven today. You got to trust him. Believe in him. Trust the story that he died for your sins. He was buried in a barber tomb. He rose from the dead. And Paul says he was seen by over 500 men at one time. If you can trust this story, just bow your head with me right now and invite Jesus into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I 
I believe that you rose from the dead. Come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank you. We thank God for who he is and what he's already done. If you are not in a church, if you not, don't have a church home, I recommend the New Beginning Church. But Jesus is the center of attention. Jesus is the main attraction. And Jesus is the captain of the ship. Thank you for joining us here at our Bible study at 715 every Wednesday. Thank you so much for being a part of our service. Please join us on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for our Sunday school and 1030 a.m. on Sunday for our worship service. It is now offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrifices. If you want to give electronically, you can do so by giving by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. If you want to mail in your gift, you can do so by mailing it to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Father God, we thank you for this privilege of giving. We ask you to bless every giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Or we stand to be dismissed. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus said, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Father God, we thank you for this privilege. We thank you that you are able to do all things through Jesus Christ. We ask you to bless us as we go. Bless our choir as they come tonight. We ask you to bless them to sing glorious songs unto you. Give them the right tune, the right voices, and the right attitude. We pray, Father God, that you continue to bless our church, that we will be a beacon light shining in a dark and dismal world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. You are dismissed.